Good day, everybody. Uh, we are one more back again to another Monday, which is my day off. Um, and we are back to uh, do more work on the Nissan truck. This today, uh, we are going to be dealing with the uh, leaking master cylinder I discussed in the last video. Okay, this is the beast we got to take out. Fortunately, since this is kind of dug down and kind of into a hole, I won't be able to put the camera on it. So, what we're going to look at to remove this, there is a, uh, a fitting here. And there's another fitting, if you can see my finger, right down in here. On the back of this, there's a bolt on either side, one there and one on the other side. Since I can't stick a camera on it, I will be back when I get this thing disconnected from the uh, booster. Also, something before I forget, there is a connector here. This goes to the brake warning light. So I've got to take all the stuff off, and then we'll be back for the next part. See you shortly. Okay, as you can see, we got it off um, as a matter of advice while I'm thinking about this. Brake fluid loves to eat paint. So when you're taking something apart like this that's going to leak, and I guarantee you it will, put something underneath the, the master cylinder to catch that stuff. That just saves you from having to go back and fix uh, paint or touch something up later on. Uh, if you can see how well this shows up, you can see along the bottom of the brake booster all of the all that slime and, and whatnot. That's the uh, how, that's the uh, brake fluid eating the paint on that. And that kind of gives you an idea of how significant the leak is. Now, some vehicles are going to have some variance in the way that they work. This being a Nissan. That little plunger just simply presses into the back of the master cylinder and we've got nothing to worry about. Some manufacturers have different ways of connecting with clips or bolts or something to that, that matter. You'll have to figure that out as you get it apart. There's going to be little variations in taking them apart. This one was easy. Um, the best way I do things is I disconnect the electrical, get it out of the way. Take care, disconnect the brake lines, that's the next, so you don't worry about them getting bent or damaged if the uh, thing wants to move as you're taking them off the end of the booster. So the most fragile thing, the next fragile, then to the least, that's the, the best order to do it because that prevents damage. And here we are with the old one, this is what it looks like out, um, you see where the uh, brake lines go in. What fails is back in here. This one leaks, so we're going. That's the reason why we're replacing it. As you can see, I just filled this the other a few days ago. It's already quite a ways down off of the top. This wasn't max when I started. Uh, the next step here will be to empty this into a container, probably a garbage can or something like over. It's a plastic one. And then will be to separate this this plastic piece that I'm holding on to off of here as this will be recycled to the new one. Okay, here we have our new one. As I mentioned before, we're going to take the plastic piece off, you know, the, the reservoir off the old one, we're going to put it to the new one. It clips into the top. Something that is very important, and these all do come with instructions on this process. After you put the reservoir on, you're going to fill it up with new brake fluid, and you're going to put this thing on a vise. If you don't have a vise, uh, come up with some kind of a redneck means to clamp it in place as you can uh, prime this system. This bag here, as you can see, are the various tools necessary, or bits necessary, to prime this, this master cylinder. This is important you do this on the bench, or you're going to be forever getting that to work, and getting all the air out of it. So on that note, this is where I'm going to go. This will be the next step. I'm going to go get the, I'll get the reservoir off the old one, onto the new one, and get this on a bench. Okay, here we are with the old one. Next step here is to get the old master cylinder off. It shouldn't be a terribly difficult process because you obviously do not want to break the plastic materials. In the case of this one, it should just more or less pry off. How difficult it wants to be, I don't yet know. So, at this point, we just work on it carefully. And that is that.
Take the old one. Once again, this to me is worth $22. You don't throw these away. They, this, they almost universally charge core charges for these. So get your money back, set it aside, take it back to the store and you're done. Next step, clamp your new one down carefully. They say in the instructions not to do it by the valve body, but I'm going to anyway. Take the new one, take a rag, make sure everything is clean. Make sure there's nothing nasty down the bottom of this. Brand new clean brake fluid. They say you need to then lubricate the flanges. and the bottom of the reservoir with brake fluid before you install it. And that note, it should slide, it should go in about as easy as it came out of the old one. After a little bit of additional effort there, we uh, have it in place. Now, next step, is to set it on the level. I have a handy dandy level right here. This is an important step, do not omit it. Okay, this is for bleeding. Take off the top, fill it up full of fluid. That's where now this little bag of tools come, a little bag of uh, pieces come in. Take these tools, run these into where the brake lines would otherwise go. Take your hoses, these will press onto the uh, nipples that you just put on the uh, outlet of the, of the master cylinder. Grab a handy dandy Phillips screwdriver or whatever tool will best represent for the style of fitting that you have on your master cylinder. You should slide in and you start carefully pressing this in. Carefully, rhythmically, and slowly, because you want to bleed the air out. Okay, we're back. Um, it's actually several hours have gone by since I started. What we ended up having was the replacement was also defective. It would not bleed air. It was sucking as much air as I could pull out of it doing the bleeding process. So I had to take it back and go get another. This one is bled out. Has the reservoir back on. It is full. I've wiped everything down. The little blue tip you see on here is to keep uh, more mess from being made. There's another one on the uh, piece that's off camera. The uh, This thing is now ready to go back in place. It should be straightforward. Get this thing put back in, get the brakes themselves bled out, and wrap this thing up. This has been a couple hour job to turn into a day, and I'm a little put out for that. Anyway, on back to uh, the reassembly side. And of course, this will come go back together the exact opposite way it came off. We'll put these mount. We'll bolt this end on first. We'll go to the two brake lines. Then I'll plug the wire in. Got one more bottles of these left, and then I'll be able to use that to bleed off the brakes themselves. So back to work. Okay, as you can see, I got it back on. Um, of course, you wipe everything down. Make sure you pull all the paper or whatever you've used to grab what drips out of there. Um, it goes on and off pretty, it goes back on the way it came off. Now this is the part where you will tend to want to get an assistant. 
because now I've got to crawl underneath and bleed these brake lines. And I'll need somebody to put stuff in there as I'm pumping the air out with my vacuum pump. So, on to the next step of procuring assistance. Okay, we got the, uh, the master cylinder bled. Now we go take a little shorty test drive.